Hi, I am Renmark, and welcome to our video tutorial about Java programming. In this video, we will talk about Lesson 7, which is Java Input Statement. So, let's get started. Java Input Statement Input is a process of providing or giving something, for example, a data, to the computer for processing and or displaying purposes. Most of the time, sa mga programs na ginagawa at gagawin pa lang natin, there will be an input event kung saan magpaprovide tayo ng data na ipaprocess ng program externally through input statements. Hindi naman pwedeng palagi na statically lang natin i-assign yung mga values natin sa ating mga variables, kagaya na ginagawa natin ngayon. Dapat, we can get them from our users as well. So, this time, we will be using input statements para magawa natin yun. In Java, the scanner class is used to get user input and it is found in the java.util package. So, in Java, ang scanner class naman yung gagamitin natin para makagamit tayo ng input statement. Although, unlike yung system class, ang scanner class ay hindi preloaded sa ating system kaya dapat pa natin siyang i-import sa package ng Java na kung tawagin natin is utility. In Java, the import statement is used to bring certain classes or the entire packages into visibility. As soon as imported, a class can be referred to directly by using only its name. The import statement provides convenience to the programmer and is not technically needed to write complete Java program. Below is the general form of the import statement. We have the keyword import followed by a space and then the package 1 and then another period and then package 2, another period and then you can call either the class name, for example, in our case, that's, that is a scanner, or you can specify asterisk. Asterisk is a wildcard denoting all or anything. So kapag gumamit tayo ng asterisk, lahat ng classes na nakapaloob dun sa package 2, iloload niya. Here, package 1 is the name of the top-level package, and package 2 is the name of subordinate package inside outer package separated by dot. Para hindi rin tayo mo confuse now, we can think of packages are as folders. Folders that are used to organize subfolders, such as packages, and subclasses as well. There is no practical limit on the depth of package hierarchy, except that imposed by the file system. Now, you specify either an explicit class name tulad nung sinabi ko sa inyo kanina or you can use an asterisk indicates that the Java compiler should import the full package. Kapag gumamit ka ng asterisk, i-import niya lahat ng mga classes do sa loob nung package na yon. Although personally, I don't recommend yung gamit ng asterisk kasi niloload niya lahat ng packages kahit yung mga hindi mo pa kailangan Nakakabigat kasi ito ito sa program execution. So, if alam mo yung mga specific package na gagamitin mo, much better if specific na agad ang ilalagay natin. So, we will now going to import the scanner class. So, to import the scanner class in Java, you can either use any of the following code. So, either you will use this one or this one. So, the first one is import then space java dot util and then dot scanner remember scanner should be written in capital bucket because this is a class then followed by a semicolon the next is the short method is java space util then followed by an asterisk as i've said kapag ginawa natin to lahat ng mga classes sa loob ng util or utility package will be loaded and we prefer the first one. Remember, bago tayo makapag-create ng scanner object na pwede natin gamitin for reading inputs, dapat 
na ma-import muna natin yung package ng scanner sa ating source code. So, hindi tayo makakagamit ng scanner ng hindi natin siya ini-import kasi hindi nga siya preloaded. So, next, we have the scanner class. To use the scanner class, create an object of the class and use any of the available methods found in the scanner class documentation. To create an instance of the scanner class, you can use the code provided below. So, we have scanner, capital po yun dahil this is a class, and then this is the object now. So, scanner, scan, is equals to new, and then tatawagin natin yung constructor niya, scanner, at sa loob ng constructor ng scanner class, ipoprovide natin na initial value yung system.in. This is how we create objects, no? Ito yung pattern, class, name, object, equal, and then new, and then you call the constructor. So, same with scanner, ganun din yung format na gagamitin natin. So, ito yung code na kakailanganin natin para dyan. In here, we are creating our scanner object that will be used para makabasa ng user inputs mula sa mga users. Kung naalala ninyo yung topic natin ng lesson 1, Diba sinabi ko dun na ang Java ay isang uri ng object-oriented programming language. And with that, bago tayo makagamit ng isang object, kailangan muna nating mag-create ng instance ng isang class. Okay, kagaya nitong scanner na nakikita natin. Gagawa tayo ng instance ng class na to in a form of this scan object. Next, we have input types. Below are some of the list of the most commonly used input methods of the scanner class. So, ito yung mga kailangan natin tandaan. Although, di nyo naman kailangan i-memorize yan kasi may intelligence naman tayong makikita. If kailangan mo magbasa ng boolean mula sa user at ang data type na sasalo sa kanya is boolean, gagamitin natin yung dot .next boolean na method. Kung byte naman ang gusto mong basahin, that would be next byte. Pag double, that is next double. Kapag float, that is next float. Kapag ka integer, that is next int. Kapag string ang binabasa natin sa user, walang next string. Okay? It is next line. Kapag naman long ang binabasa natin, that would be next long. And then sa short would be next short. So, some of this will be a scene, no? Greatly. This mga examples natin. Especially yung next float, next int, next int at saka yung next line. Now, to further understand, we will now demonstrate how to import the scanner class and create the scanner object and use the created scanner object in action. So, let's get started. In here, I have my uh, Eclipse already loaded. So, I'll go to Workbench. And then, same with what we always do, we go to our project, the Learn ITEC Java, we create a new class. So, right-click new and then we create a new class and then we will going to create a class name Java input or simply input statements demo. Then, hit finish. Next, once the class is loaded, we create our main method by typing public static void main. And then, next, we have our string and then args. So, next. First things first, again, kapag balak natin gumamit ng input statement, kailangan natin mag-import ng scanner class. So, to do that, do sa first line, bago dun sa ating class declaration, we should do the imports dito. Dito tayo gumagawa ng import. Dun sa labas ng ating class. So, import, java, and then dot. So, ipapakita niya dito yung mga sub-packages na meron. Medyo marami-rami yan at ang gagamitin lang natin dyan ay ang dot util, and then dot. And then, pagkakita natin sa util, ito yung mga sumusunod pang uh, sa packages pero we will stop here at gagamitin na natin ang scanner class. So, we will go into import java.util.scanner or kung again, kung tinatamad ka, you can use asterisk instead. 
But again, I do not prefer that one. So, kanya-kanyang preference kasi yan. Next, after nating ma-import yung ating scanner class, pwede na natin gamitin yung ating scanner class ngayon. So, scanner, mag-create na tayo ng object. So, scanner, that's the class name. Scan. Kahit dito, kahit ano yung ilagay nating pangalan. Pwedeng read, pwedeng basa, and, and so on. So, uh, discretion natin kung ano yung ipapangalan nating object. Uh, pero, on my case, nakasanayan ko na na gamitin ko yung scan. And then, that would be equal to a new instance of a scanner class. And then, tatawagin natin yung constructor at maglalagay tayo ng system.in sa loob. Okay? So, after doing so, pwede na natin gamitin ngayon yung ating scan object at kapag pinrest natin itong dot, mapapasin ninyo, makikita na natin lahat ng mga available methods sa loob ng ating scanner object. So, naintindihan. Yung mga next na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina, eto yung mga yon. So, gagamitin natin yung mga yan mamaya. So, una, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng scanner object na wala itong import. So, para ipakita kapag kaya kinomen ko, nag error siya. So, hahanapin niya kasi hindi preloaded yung ating scanner. So, again, ha, kailangan naka-import yan. So, hindi ka rin naman pwedeng gumamit ng scan na hindi mo siya declare as instance. Kasi, pag ginawa mo yan, magtataka siya. Sino si scan? So, hindi niya ito kilala. So, again, yun lang naman yung mga first two steps na kailangan nyo magawa. Una, mag-import. At pangalawa, mag-create ng instance ng class scanner. So, once na meron na tayong ganyan, madali na ang lahat. Pwede tayo mag-gumawa ng printout. For example, system.out.print And then, uh, for example, enter an integer number. So, for example, ipoprompt natin yung user gamit ang output statement na print na mag-input siya ng integer number. So, i-run lang muna natin to para makita natin na may printout na mangyayari dito. Ngayon, gusto ko sana mangyari is mag input tayo ng kahit anong number pag pinrest natin yung enter. Okay? mag input tayo ng 10 tapos magpapress tayo ng enter dapat papasok yan dun sa ating program. So, how do we do that? Very simple. Una, you have to declare a variable na sasalo doon sa input natin. And in this case, for example, uh, sasabihin natin, this would be an int num. Okay? Ito yung pangalan ng ating variable. And that would be equal to our object scan. And then, since ang binabasa natin ay isang integer, ang gagamitin nating method would be next int. Nagkakaintindihan. So, kung ano yung magiging data type ng ating uh, variable, yun din yung magiging method na gagamitin mong pambasa. So, we will be using next int. Now, to see whether pumasok nga ba talaga yung input natin, we can actually test. So, sabihin natin, ipiprint natin na you inputted, okay, you inputted, and then, Ipiprint out natin kung ano man yung value na pumasok kay int num. Eto. So, pag nira natin yan, di ba, mapiprint yung enter an integer number do sa screen. Pagkatapos, iaalaw niya tayo na mag-input ng kahit anong number. So, kapag nag-input tayo ng number, integer number, kailangan basahin niya yon at i-assign niya doon sa ating int num. So, Pag successful yun, ibig sabihin magkakaroon ng laman yung ating int num at meron tayong kayang iprint o pwedeng iprint dito sa ilalim. So, ano man yung input natin, dapat yun ang iprint niya. Subukan natin. So, we take uh, an execution. So, for example, mag-input ako ng 100 and then if I press enter, you inputed 100. So, tama. Ibig sabihin, nabasa niya yung input ko. Isa pa, no? Baka sabihin nyo, Daya lang yan. mag tayo ng number, for example, 50. So, after pressing enter, as you can see, pumapasok na yung 50 successfully o yung input natin doon sa ating uh, in, a variable. Okay? So, subukan naman natin sa ibang data type para masaya. Okay? So, kinoment ko na yun para subukan naman natin ngayon ang Float. So, we have uh, enter a floating point 
float enter float number yeah ganyan na lang and then we have float float num would be equal to scan dot next di ba meron tayo dot float actually dapat lang pinakita ko sa inyo kung paano yung mangyari kung matigas yung ulo no actually magi error siya no ah, pero mamaya ipapakita ko pa rin sa inyo kung sakaling nagkamali ka ah, float num Mali ang spelling ko. Okay? Isip ko kung ano eh. So, we hit run. This time naman, floating point number. Kunwari, 98.75. And then, enter. So, ayun siya. 98.75. Now, paano kung matigas yung ulo mo at pinalitan mo to? Kinawa mo tong next int. Hindi. Next int ang gagamitin ko. Okay? So, I hit run. And click OK. And then, nag-input ako 98.75. Enter. Pack. So, bakit siya nag-error? Kasi, ang input natin ay, dito pa lang kasi mag-error na yun. Ang input natin is a float. Pero, ang ginagamit mong pambasa is isang integer. So, paano mangyayari yun? Hindi magkakaroon ng data type mismatch dito. Ayun, tama. Mismatch, in, input mismatch exception. So, kung ano yung data type ng variable na sumasalo, dapat yun din yung gagamitin mong pambasa hindi pwedeng magkaiba yan. Okay? So, hopefully, nakakaintindihan tayo. Madali lang naman eh, kasi binigay ko naman yung listahan ng mga uh, gagamitin nating method kung depende kung ano yung data type at kung ano yung babasa sa kanya. So, di yun magiging magulo. Ngayon, uh, depende na lang kung boolean ba yan, kung character ba yan, or kung string. Actually, yun doon sa character, no, very... Yung sa, yung sa string kasi, uh, wala pa tayo doon. Pero pagdating natin sa string, doon ko i-discuss kung paano yung pagbasa doon. Doon muna tayo sa character. Yung boolean kasi ganun din eh. Ang character ang medyo pinakamahirap dyan. May special trick para magawa natin yung inputting ng character. And wala ata yun sa PowerPoint. Okay, so... System.out.print and enter... Uh, Para mas masaya yung pinaka-legit na example. Do you want to continue? Continue. And then, press Y or N. Ayan. So, kunwari meron tayong gantong prompt. And then, syempre, isang letter lang ang tatanggapin natin dyan. So, magde-declare tayo ng car. At ang pangalan nating variable is car choice. Ayan. Car, character choice. Now, but cut. Ngayon, since ang character ang ginagamit natin, so scan that next, okay? So kahit na magaang mata ninyong kakahanap ng next car dyan, wala kayong makikita ang event o method na next car. Walang ganyan. So, ang gagamitin natin na pambasa dito is still next line, okay? So, next line yung gagamitin natin dyan. Pero hindi pa yan tama. So, uh, papalitan muna natin to car choice okay so bakit siya nag error kasi sinabi ko sa inyo kanina na ang next line ay para sa string eh ang string hindi mo naman pwedeng ilagay sa car dahil ang string is more than one character while ang car isang uh, character lamang so, ang technique dito para makapagbasa tayo ng car is gagamit tayo ng sub-methods ng uh, string method. So, that, that is dot. And then, maglalagay tayo ng dot doon sa dulo, no? no? Open and close parenthesis. Ibig sabihin, mag i tayo ng isa pang method pagkatapos ng string method na to. So, dot, string method ang tawag natin sa mga to. At gagamitin natin yung unang-unang method na nandyan. That is the method car at and very very ano ako sa pagpronounce no sa amin kasi mga pinoy na no? ibang ibig sabihin yan pagka pangit ang pagkakasabi so scan dot next line dot car at ayan so and then we will going to put an index which is zero so this will going to work explain ko mamaya kung bakit nangyari yan so run lang natin muna 
And then, mag-input ako kunwari ng y. So, you inputted y, tama. Gumagana na siya, no? And then, n. And then, you inputted n. Ngayon, paano nangyari tong car at zero na yan? Ganito kasi yan. Uh, crash course, pero hindi pa talaga dapat natin i-discuss dito na pag sinabi natin string, it's just a series of character. For example, ang word na hello uh, is a series of character. So, we have h-e-l-l-o. Ngayon, string ang tawag natin dyan. Ngayon, per isang letter, ang tawag natin sa per letter na nandito is character. Ngayon, bawat characters may positional value tayong sinasabi. Ang ibig sabihin dito, ang h ay nakapwesto sa index 0 o siya yung nasa unang character. Kumbaga parang sino yung unang character. Pero imbis na sabihin nating una as in 1, in uh, programming, we always starts at 0 kasi 0 naman talaga ang starting point ng mga number. And then, ang susunod na character will be on position 2, 3, 4, and then 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So, ganito ang magiging itsura niya virtually. Ngayon, kapag sinabi nating car at, ibig sabihin, babasahin natin yung input na supposed to be pang string. Okay, pang string ha. So, ang point ko dito, kahit mag-type pa ako ng napakahabang yes, eto yung binasa ng next line, ang gusto ko lang namang makuha ay yung character na nakalagay sa position na zero. Ibig sabihin, kahit gaano kahaba yung input mo, kukunin mo lang kung sino yung character na nakapwesto doon sa index zero, which is y. Bigyan ko yung demonstration. Hindi mag error yan kahit mag-type ako ng kabuang yes. Still, y pa rin yung kinukuha niya. Or, mag-type ka ng kahit sobrang habang character, still, yung unang letter pa rin yung kukunin niya. Kasi nga, uh, this is for string input, pero dinadaya lang natin, this is a simple hack, kung saan kinukuha lang natin yung unang character mula do sa string na yon which is eto yon kasi nga car at position 0, at kung ano man yung isang character na yon yun ang ipinapasok natin do sa ating variable na car. So, Meaning, problem solved. So, it will going to work. So, I believe lahat ng mga importanting details about the inputting or the input statement is na itakel ko na sa video na to. So, I guess we're done with this chapter. I hope you learned something sa lesson natin ito. And that's the end of lesson 7. Credits to w3schools.com as the main source of content in this tutorial. If you love this video, kindly drop a thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you.